Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the July Outlook. So that is the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of July. Now this is audio only this month and that is because I haven't been well over the past week. I think I've just been knocked out by a bit of a heavy cold. I've been isolating at home just recovering and getting better and I'm a lot better but I'm feeling pretty run down still and I thought I would just do this as audio only so that I could at least get this out before June ends so I apologize for being so incredibly late normally I record these you know around the early 20th of the month kind of thing and then I have it uploaded a lot sooner so Thank you to those of you who have been asking, where is the report? It is now here and it's audio only. So that way we all at least get uh, you know, some news before the month of July begins. So we're gonna take a look at the month of July. We're gonna see what do we have going on in the stars this month. Well, we have a continuation of the Pub Card 3 phenomenon that I talked about last time. If you missed last month's reading, then do take a look because that does cover June and July. Okay, it covers this Pap Kathri phenomenon that we've got going on in the sky where Jupiter is being squeezed. Okay, and look at that. Jupiter has squeezed me off the screen, right? You can't even see me. So I thought that was kind of funny. I've, I've been squeezed out of the show kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got this squeezing that's going on in the sky. Now, how is that manifesting for everyone? Well, as I mentioned last month, you know, it, it can manifest in, in a few ways. How I've been observing it in practice is that it has caused some inflation. I don't know if everyone's noticed, but definitely here in Sydney, Australia, we've got prices going up all the time so this is prices of basic simple things you know our bills uh groceries simple groceries like the price of broccoli here is like really sky high you know so we've got things that are just um fuel bills fuel bills are going up for everybody aren't they so there's a lot of uh inflation that's going on i do think this is connected in with the pub card through phenomenon We've got Jupiter in Pisces. Jupiter in Pisces is being squeezed by Saturn and Mars on either side. Another way that this can manifest, as has manifested for me, is health. One can feel run down. One can feel really tired, drained, sick. You know, I managed to catch this awful cold. So, yeah, it, it's been pretty full on this time and it's going to continue this Pab Kathri squeezing effect is going to continue throughout July. And as I mentioned last month, we will all want to take extra care early August. Okay, we've got some tension in the sky. Pretty sure we've got Mars, Uranus and Rahu all together. And that is going to be in Aries. That is going to be intense. So there could be things playing out on the ground level for the collective. It can play out in that way, but of course in this monthly, I will be touching on Mars being in Aries for everybody anyway. So you'll find out in your mini report how it's gonna impact you. I've got a note here on my screen, take extra care across July and early August. If you are traveling, just build in buffer time, make sure you've got insurance. Make sure you're double checking everything, getting to places extra early, all that kind of thing. Another interesting thing we've got happening in July is we are going to have five planets in own house. That is really interesting. Now it's gonna happen from the 3rd of July to the 13th of July. Five planets in own house. Now are we gonna feel this? That's an interesting one when I've encountered this before have i felt anything have i felt more harmony in the sky uh, i would say not really i haven't had too much uh, experience of 
feeling the great effects of this. But I'll tell you who will benefit enormously from this wonderful phenomenon of five planets in own house. That's anyone who's going to be born this month, okay? So for the new babies that are coming, any expectant mothers, any mothers that are about to give birth, if you're going to give birth to your baby, say for example from the 3rd of July to the 13th of July, well, you've got a very special baby there because uh, this baby's going to have five planets in own house. So that would make for a very special birth chart. Okay, so this is really exciting. So anyone who's giving birth at this time, that is super exciting. You should feel really, really good and know that you've got a very special baby who's going to enjoy this uh, very special chart for a very long time. So that's great. Another thing we've got happening in July is we've got Saturn moving back into Capricorn on 13th July. Okay, so how have we all been doing with Saturn in Aquarius? Now, I did feel the effects of Saturn in Aquarius. Those of you who watch Pick a Card, you'll notice it even took me out and about. I went, you know, into town, I did some Pick a Cards outdoors. I got to go out, I got to do things, I, I felt new energy felt things were a bit more social, things were a bit more lively, things, things felt like they were moving and happening again. Okay, so if you've had a couple of years where you've really been quite stuck, which is very normal for so many people, okay, Saturn in Capricorn has kept a lot of people stuck, a lot of people grounded, a lot of people unable to fly, a lot of people apart from their loved ones. You know, a lot of people are missing home, a lot of people are stuck in places still. Well, I'm here to tell you that Saturn in Aquarius could be the thing that gets you out and about again, okay? So now the taste of Saturn in Aquarius is going to come to a close. It's coming to a close on 13 July and we're going to be experiencing Saturn in Capricorn, which we've had, right? We know Saturn in Capricorn really well. We will be covering the same old ground that we covered from approximately 24 degrees, 24 minutes of arc, okay? So that is, we've covered this ground uh, from about 27 Feb of this year, okay? So in some ways, I think this is good. I think this is good, familiar old ground. And for a lot of us, how this is going to manifest is that we will be able to use these coming months to the end of the year, right? Where we're covering the same old ground that we covered since 27 Feb this year. We're going to be able to use these upcoming months to just get a lot of stuff done, just get a lot of projects done, just get a lot of, you know, think of the things that you've been saying I'd love to get this done. I'd love to get that project done. Oh, it'd be great if I could do this. Right? The things that you've wanted to do, that you've been planning to do, the, these next few months are the months to just get it all done. Okay, because we've got fresh new energy at the start of next year. Okay, and you wanna be starting new things next year. You wanna be doing different things. You wanna be you know, expanding, exploring, going forward. You want to be doing different things at the start of next year. So what are all the things that you just need to cover off and get done now? And, and this is good time, these next few months, this is good time here for you to just power ahead and get some of those things done. And these aren't particularly new things. These are things that you've said you'll do. These are things that you've had on your agenda for a while, you just haven't got them done. Okay, so that's what these next few months are going to be really good for. But guys, I think that's all I'm going to cover uh, for the overview this time. That's really all I've got to say. Hopefully next month I will be back on track. I'm sure I will be. And I'll be bringing you some fresh insights as to August, you know, August, September, October. Also, uh, if you would like, you can sign up for the newsletter. I haven't written the newsletter yet. That's another thing on my to-do list. Let's see if I can get it done. If I can't, guys, then the newsletter might be a few days late this month, okay? So it's, it's just health. That's all. It's just holding me back a little bit. 
but that's that's how it goes you know nature has its ways nature has its intelligence and I fully respect that I know now how to just not push it and to make sure I look after myself so yeah all right well let's let's carry on with the mini reports all right Aries welcome Aries thank you so much for joining now this is Aries ascendant this is Aries moon this is Aries sun and that's as per the sidereal Vedic system so now all month Aries uh, Mars your ascendant Lord is in your first house okay so this is good for you this is good energy good time to look after your physical body okay uh, pay extra attention to your health that's going to be important for you this month sometimes Mars in the first house it can be you know it can be a bit too much energy or it can overwork you over time it can be draining okay because sometimes you might get too excited you and then you do too much and then you feel really drained so if you're feeling really tired or any of that just make sure you rest don't overdo it okay you might be really excited uh, with having you know your ascendant lord in your first house but don't go overboard now venus what's venus doing venus at the start of the month to about the 13th 14th July she's going to be in your second house okay this is great for shopping this is great for buying beautiful things things that you've been eyeing out for a while if there's anything that you have been saving up for or keeping your eye on this might be the month to to take the plunge and buy it uh, we've got Venus 14th July she's then going to move into your third house into Gemini third house okay so this is really great energy for socializing with friends if you want to hang out with your friends uh, mid-month onwards perfect time to do so okay even if that's just chatting more on zoom or definitely make a conscious attempt to spend more time with your friends but zoom it's never as good as being with someone in person it's it doesn't replace that if you can get out and be with your friends in person definitely do that now on the 16th 17th july we're going to have a sun and mercury shift from your third house to your fourth house so this is going to shift the focus possibly from now this is an interesting one because on the one hand from venus i am saying definitely you know spend time with your friends um, mid-month onwards but then we've also got this shift of sun and mercury going from your third to your fourth house this is actually going to encourage you to be at home you might find that the focus does shift and it can be a bit of a thing you want to be with your friends you know there is that venusian energy that's encouraging that but then perhaps there's something that shifts your focus more back home you have to be at home there might be some pressing matters to attend to and especially in regards to your relationship with your mother okay there might be something where you need to be more home focused even though say for example you would actually like to be uh, a bit more out and about a bit more doing things something might bring you home okay so just watch out for that that's kind of 16th 17th july onwards We've got a full moon 13th 14th July depending on where you are that is Uttara Ashada Sagittarius that's happening in your ninth house so you might discover that a large project might complete or and that's at work okay so but if it's not a work type thing this could well be that something to do with your relationship with your father it's like this full moon is going to illuminate something to do with your relationship with your father it could also illuminate things to do with your relationship with authority figures in your life you might even be able to see where it is that you've given your power away in the past and that could that awareness could just be enormously freeing to you in some way because when you make that realization the power is yours you know when you realize that wow I used to give my power away 
to, to these type of people. Just on the realization of that, you won't, you won't do it anymore, you know, and you will change possibly. You might change the way you do things going forward. So that's pretty exciting with that full moon there. There's a new moon on the 29th of July in Pushya Nakshatra, that's Cancer, happening in your fourth house. So this is really a great time to wish for a new home or a house renovation or some big improvement to where you live. If there's something along those lines that you would love to wish for, this is a really great time, Aries. So I want to thank you so much for stopping by. All right, Taurus. Welcome, Taurus. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon, Taurus Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. We're going to take a look at Mars. So where is Mars for you all month? Mars is going to be 12th from your Ascendant. So if you have to travel, Taurus, please take extra care. Okay, I'm not saying anything bad is going to happen. But what I am saying is that build in some buffer time. Don't be in a rush. Double check everything. Take insurance. You know, do all the right things, okay? Just make sure on your end, you know, you're, you're doing the best and that, that should be good. Now, Venus is going to be moving into some nice areas for you. So Venus, from the start of the month to about the 13th, 14th July, she's going to be in your first house. This is great for attracting attention, actually. You might look fantastic or you might feel fantastic or you know, something about you might be a bit more radiant. But the idea here is that you're looking good, you're feeling good, okay? You've got beautiful Venusian energy uh, in your first house there and that's always great. It's always great, a great thing to, to make someone, you know, look really well and, um, and be more attractive. So that's great, especially if you're single, okay? Now, mid-month to the end of the month, this is about 14 July to the end of the month, Venus will be in your second house, okay? Gemini, second house there. So... Venus from you know your Venus side you might feel inclined to do some shopping you might feel inclined to you know spend a bit more than normal right um, and this could be you know spending on yourself as well getting your hair done and things like that can also be things like you know, you might be inspired to cook up something new as well. Um, you might be inspired to change your diet in some way, but um, cook up something delicious, spend time with the family. That's going to be really nice for you, Taurus, this month. This is, a, this is a good time for you to be, you know, enjoying close time with your family. And that's from your Venusian perspective, okay? But from the perspective of your Sun and Mercury, you are going to experience a bit of a shift, okay? Because there's going to be a part of you that is going to be enjoying time with the family, enjoying indulging and shopping and all those beautiful things. But Sun and Mercury have different agendas here. So 16, 17 July, we've got Sun and Mercury. They're going to shift from your second house to your third house. Now how I'm going to read this is that that's going to shift the focus from your family and home life to work career confidence. Okay, so this is actually a good transit from the sun perspective. This is great for you when it comes to your work. So we're really looking 16, 17 July onwards. Work energy is good. So if you feel inspired to, you know, perhaps if there's something you want to present at work or perhaps you want to try for something or go for a new job or you know uh, if you have social media you might be seen a lot more as well this can be that kind of energy so that's from 16 17 July onwards you know if you put the emphasis on your work and building those next steps 
you should find that you're able to make some good progress here. Now there's a full moon happening on the 13th, 14th July. That's in Uttarashada Nakshatra in Sagittarius in your eighth house. So some family dynamic can become clear to you and this is especially to do with your beliefs around dependence and or independence. There might be something that comes clear to you in regards to your place in the family, how you fit in the family, you know, how dependent are you, okay, that dependence is good, it's not a bad thing, you know, it's, it's good to be, as the psychiatrists talk about, healthily interdependent, you know, that's important, we need, we need people, we need a family, we need, you know, we need our brothers and sisters and our family and, you know, we need all of that, right, but there's, you know, sometimes things go out of whack, sometimes we're too dependent, and sometimes equally we're aiming for independence, you know, we want to uh, do more of our own thing, kind of. So some of your beliefs around this might become clear during this full moon on the 13th or 14th of July. And there's a new moon happening on the 29th of July, this is Pushya Nakshatra Cancer in your third house. So when it comes to wishing for something new on this new moon, it's a great time to wish for new work. It's a great time to wish for more clients if you are self-employed. A uh, great time to wish for the next step up in your career or business. And of course, you know, if, if you're not working or work is not the thing for you, also it's a great time to wish for just a new level of confidence and courage you know, to, to go after more of the things that you want. But Taurus, all up, it's looking like a pretty good month for you. Take care. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon, Gemini Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. All right, so Gemini, you've got a beautiful month ahead of you. I'm very excited for your Mars transit. Look at that, you've got Mars in the 11th house all month. This is great energy for you, okay? This is excellent energy for putting yourself out there, for going for new projects, or for meeting new people, making new contacts, making new friends. You know, it's good for new financial opportunities. Okay, now at the end of the month, things could be a little bit you know, in, there's some instability possibly. Also early August, things could be a little bit challenging with this Mars placement, but for you, you're one of the lucky three where you're getting some really good, strong Mars energy that you can use across the month of July. So keep your focus on Mars and keep your focus on what it is you wanna build. Venus is looking very good. So now Venus at the start of the month to about 13, 14 July is in the 12th house. This is great for escapism, you know, great for escaping into entertainment, getting into, you know, good books, your spirituality, indulging, something about you escaping. If you need a bit of an escape, if you need a bit of downtime, Venus is the one, okay? To tune into Venus energy there. Now Venus on the 14th of July to the end of the month is in Gemini in your first house. So she's going to help you look fantastic, okay, and help your physical health be very robust, which is great because that will help your Mars, you, you know, when you're looking good, feeling good, you want to put yourself out there more, don't you? And, and this is also good for things like social media. If you run social media, you know, and you're hoping to attract more people, that kind of thing. This is really great energy here for you, Gemini. Let's take a look at Sun and Mercury. What are they doing? So from Sun and Mercury perspective, from 16, 17 July onwards, we're going to have Sun and Mercury shift from your first house to your second house. So this will shift the focus more just from your sense of self and your life on your own to be being a bit more family focused. And this is really good actually because you've got that strong Mars energy here. So 
how you can use that Mars energy. It's not just for yourself. What are you building for the people around you as well? Okay, so that is going to be important. Family relationships are going to be key. So 16, 17 July onwards for you. And I've got the note here. It's a good time for ancestral healing work as well. So if that's something that's on your radar, if you've ever done that or if you want to do that kind of work, this is really a good time to be looking into that. Now there's a full moon happening 13th, 13th 14th July, Uttara Shadha Nakshatra, Sagittarius. This is happening for you in your seventh house. So some kind of dynamic in terms of relationships, okay, your love relationships, marriage, all that kind of thing. Some, some dynamic or pattern is going to become clear to you. So this is regarding your beliefs around love and or marriage, okay. It's, there's something in your set of beliefs that will become clear to you about how you do relationships. And the, the kind of clarity that you can attain at this time can free you, okay? It can free you to experience more love. It can free you, you know, to, to enjoy your love life even more, okay? So it's a beautiful full moon. There's a new moon happening 29th July, Pushya Nakshatra, Cancer, in your second house. So this is a great time to wish for something relating to your family. It's an excellent time to wish for some healing to happen yeah, to your family as a whole. It's so interesting. You've got quite the theme of um, ancestral healing. There's a family focus here. There's, there's some strong family focus at the moment here for you, Gemini, that would be good. Something that, yeah, it's like the family requires your attention or something, but on the new moon, it's a great time for you to be wishing for some healing, some massive healing for your entire family line, you know, the various lines, uh, your ancestral lines. It'd be amazing if you could wish for some healing there. But Gemini, it's looking like an excellent month for you. I'm really excited for your month ahead, actually. You've got beautiful energy there. So make the most of it, especially your Mars energy. Make the most of that. All right, we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, Cancer Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. You've got Mars in your 10th house all month. Okay, so this is really good energy for work and career. As long as you don't you know, go over your boss's head kind of thing, or you, you know, uh, you don't want to push it too much, Cancer. You don't want to go overboard here with this Mars energy. This is kind of good Mars energy for work in that, yes, you'll be able to get a lot of stuff done. You'll be able to achieve a lot, but I would just say, don't go overboard. Don't push it. Okay. And uh, be careful how you speak to seniors at work and all that kind of thing. Now, Venus is beautifully placed for love for you. I'm so excited, Cancer, because I think I remember towards the end of last year, I was saying it wasn't looking good for love and all that, but now you're at the beginning of a glorious stretch of things being great for your love life. So this is, you know, Venus is beautifully placed for love for many, many months ahead now. So Venus is in your 11th house this month. And she's going to be in the 12th house in the later half of the month. So you kick off the month with great energy for meeting new people. Okay, so that's really good. So enjoy that. Enjoy being social and enjoy, you know, expanding your social circles perhaps. And in many parts of the world, things are really opening up and people are getting out and having fun. And do that. Okay, definitely do that, Cancer. Now on the 16th, 17th July, we have both the Sun and Mercury shifting from your 12th house to your first house. So if you've been having trouble sleeping, uh, you'll know why, you know, so that's first half of the month, you might have trouble sleeping and that's natural, that's all that activity in the 12th house, Sun and Mercury, when they get busy in the 12th, it's hard to sleep. So you might find it's hard to sleep, but 
Sun and Mercury, the beautiful thing about where they are in this part of the zodiac, going from the 12th to the 1st. This is going to be a good time for you to work on your health and fitness regimes, okay? So definitely, you know, uh, perhaps this is a time where you need to start something up or it's a really great time, the last half of the month, to start up a new fitness routine, actually. Um, it's a great time to pay attention to your physical body and just to, to work with that and, you know, get yourself really in shape. So that is good, good energy there for that. On the 13th, 14th July, we've got a full moon in Uttara Shadha Nakshatra, Sagittarius, that's happening in your sixth house. So there might be some dynamic at work that becomes clear to you. Okay, uh, and especially in regards to any competitors or peers at your workplace, something might become clear where you just understand some people a lot better or you understand yourself better, you understand your own ability to compete with others, how, you know, it, something will become clear to you on this full moon, okay, 13th, 14th July. And it's, yeah, it's especially around the area of your beliefs. It's something to do with your beliefs here. It's something to do with work, how you serve, how you, how you perform your work in the world. There's a new moon happening 29th July, Pushya Nakshatra Cancer, happening for you in your first house. This is your new moon, Cancer. This is beautiful. So this new moon is all about you. So wish big for all the things that you want to see happen in your life, for you, for those around you, for now and well into the future. You can wish for things, you know, that are going to happen in the next decades, right? Don't be limited. This is your new moon. So wish big for what it is that you would really want to manifest or materialize in this lifetime. Okay, plant that seed. You know, this is really the time to do that. But Cancer, energy's looking quite good here for you. I'm liking this, especially your Venus energy. It's looking wonderful. So enjoy all of that, Cancer. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant. Leo Moon, Leo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Leo, what do we have going on? Well, we've got Mars in your ninth house all month. Okay, so definitely take care in relationships that you have with authority figures. Okay, now this could be your father. This could be father figures in your life. This could be authority figures. This could be the government. This could be all kinds of things. Okay, it's anyone who's you know, you perceive to have more authority over you, right? Definitely be careful in those relationships. Don't push any of those relationships. Don't try to go over anyone's head or know more or, you know, this is a good time to be humble, okay? This is a good time to take your foot off the accelerator as well at work if you can. Uh, not, not ideal for wanting to get ahead from a Mars perspective. It's really interesting because you've got good energy from your sun perspective. But I am going to say with, with Mars, don't push it. That's, that's definitely one of the things that's coming across here. I've got the note that end of this month and early August, the energy can be quite changeable and quite erratic, so take extra care, be measured this month in your actions. Venus is quite nice. Venus is, so at the start of the month to about the 13th, 14th July, she's going to be in your 10th house. This is good energy for your work, but not, you see, Mars energy when it comes to work is, you know, you want to do lots of things, get projects done, achieve, you know, all that kind of thing. Now, Venus in the 10th, one of the things this is great for actually is presenting things 
stylishly at work or there's something that you're doing at work that you're paying extra attention to the look and feel of it or the style of it you know that's a better place to put your work energy okay into making sure things present really beautifully that's a better uh, use of your energy at work this month Venus from the 14th July to the end of the month is in Gemini in the 11th house now that's lovely for socializing and for meeting new people and for expanding your network so that's great you've got some really good social energy and then after that you know you've got a great stretch with love life okay so you've got good energy coming up over the coming months which is great let's have a look at Sun and Mercury what are they doing so from 16 17 July we have Sun and Mercury shifting from your 11th house to your 12th house so this is some nice energy here for networking so networking is good for the first half of the month and then the second half of the month the energy shifts to being a bit more you might feel a bit more restless actually and what you might find is that you might find it's hard to sleep at night so that's from 16 17 July onwards you might find it's just challenging to sleep really well okay if you're, if you're discovering, yeah, that it's hard to sleep, this is why. Now there's a full moon happening on the 13th, 14th July. That's Uttara Ashada Nakshatra, Sagittarius. That's happening for you in your fifth house. So your beliefs around your creativity are going to become clear at this time. And you may come to some understanding as to what's been holding you back. Maybe you've been having all these creative ideas and having all these things that you really want to do but you find that it's really difficult to get them out there to get it done why is it so something's going to come clear to you on this full moon where you'll have some deeper understanding about your own creativity and what's holding you back okay and it's something around your beliefs so there's a new moon happening 29 july push your nakshatra cancer that's happening for you in your 12th house okay so now this is a great new moon to keep a dream journal you might dream a lot more at this time you might get new insights through your dreams the other thing is that this is just this is quite an incredible time new insights are going to become clear to you so you will definitely want to keep a little journal with you or keep a little diary with you or keep your phone with you and record audio notes or something like that but this is quite a good time for your creativity for getting insights for getting ideas for kind of reaching beyond the veil and bringing something new for all of us you might be able to do that so it's very significant for any artists out there but Leo all up it's looking like a pretty good month ahead for you I'm liking your Venus energy in particular that's really nice especially from the 14th July onwards Venus is quite a highlight for you so thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Virgo Virgo welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Virgo ascendant this is Virgo moon this is Virgo sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now you've got Mars in your eighth house all month so definitely be careful if you're traveling if you're deciding to go away somewhere for a break maybe you're wanting to travel with the family as well it's quite possible with this eighth house energy so be extra careful if you travel take extra time the other thing about this eighth house energy is so it could manifest in terms of a short trip with the family that kind of thing it could also manifest as a motivation to resolve matters around shared finance or shared assets okay so you might have some energy to deal with that at this time uh, it could also manifest in terms of a desire to do some clutter clearing okay perhaps you need to clear your space this could be good energy to get on and do that okay 
uh, you might look around and discover, oh my gosh, all this stuff is just accumulated around me. I really need to tidy up. So could manifest in that way. Now, Venus at the start of the month to about the 13th, 14th July is in your ninth house. So this is really lovely energy for mentorship. That's one of the ways I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this in terms of mentorship. This could be great energy for you to become a mentor. Equally, this could be great energy for you to find the right mentor for you as well. Okay. Uh, because we've got that social edge to Venus. And this is definitely a way of expanding yourself socially getting a mentor or being a mentor you know it's a great thing to do now Venus from the 14th July to the end of the month is in Gemini that's your 10th house so this is beautiful energy to just bring a sense of style to what it is that you do you know maybe you need to reformat something at your work or change your presentation slides or you know, it's just a good time to refresh or update or bring some style to what it is that you do. That's, that's going to be important there for Venus. Now let's take a look at Sun and Mercury. So this is 16, 17 July onwards. We have the Sun and Mercury shifting from your 10th house to your 11th house. This is excellent energy for your career and for work. I'm so happy for you, Virgo. This is good. Um, this is great energy for being seen as an authority in your field, okay? So especially if you run social media, this is great energy. So you've got some really strong career energy here. Sun and Mercury from the 10th house to the 11th house, that's brilliant. So really great energy there for you, Virgo, when it comes to career. Okay, there's a full moon on the 13th or 14th of July in Uttara Ashada Nakshatra, Sagittarius. This is happening for you in your fourth house. So this is going to illuminate any beliefs that are tied in to your relationship with your mother. So th these could be beliefs that perhaps your mother is conditioned uh, into you through, you know, throughout childhood or the, you know, the time that she raised you. There would be all kinds of beliefs that you have from your mother or in regards to the relationship with your mother okay but there's some form of beliefs that are going to come clear at this time and when they do you're going to feel released you're going to feel a lot freer you know and perhaps maybe it's something your mother might have thought about you it could be in that way there's lots of ways one can interpret this or see this, but how I'm seeing this is that there are some beliefs that are going to become clear to you. And if you're able to let those go or just become fully aware, it will release and you'll feel more free and more able to be yourself and more able to take your power back and make your own decisions and mature and all that kind of thing, right? So it's good, it's good energy coming up there there's a new moon happening on the 29th of July that's in Pushya Nakshatra Cancer happening in your 11th house so this is a great time to wish big for all the things you would love to have in your life especially big material things or things that are going to make a an impact to you materially Okay, so great time to wish, you know, for a big house or a big car or whatever it is that you want, all the stuff that you want. Think about what it is that you want. Great time to wish for those things, to plant seeds so that those things may come into your life. Virgo, it's looking like a pretty good month for you, especially Sun and Mercury shifting there. Sun and Mercury are great actually across july uh beautiful energy there and that's to do with your career so enjoy that virgo all right we are now going to welcome libra libra thank you so much for joining so this is libra 
ascendant, Libra moon, Libra sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now Libra, you've got Mars in your seventh house all month. So what I'll say is be really careful in all relationships across the board. Okay, take care in your relationships. This is not a great time for you to be mm, doing too much in relationships. Okay. And if certain things can wait till, you know, the month after, then that, that's good. And then that can be certain, what do I mean by these certain things? Like, let's say you want to pursue someone romantically. Uh, this, let's have a look. Venus is looking okay there, but there's going to be better energy. Okay, so with this Mars energy here, um, it's not looking ideal. So I've got the note here. This is how you'll be able to save the situation. This is a good time for you to be more conscious of the needs of others than your own. Okay, that'll help you. So if you're more devoted and more conscious of the needs of the other, then relationships should be, should be okay. Now Venus at the start of the month to about the 13th or 14th of July is going to be in your 8th house. So this is a nice time with your family, nice time in you know any established relationships that you have. Venus, 14th July onwards to the end of the month is going to be in Gemini, which is your ninth house. So this is nice energy at your workplace actually, and especially to do with mentors, to do with, you know, if you are a mentor, you'll have a nice time with your team person or whoever that is. So that's if you're a mentor. And if you get a mentor, you know, you should be able to learn and grow a lot there. So that's good energy there. 16, 17 July, we have both the Sun and Mercury shift from your ninth house to your 10th house. So there's some good energy at work, but I would say be careful with authority figures, seniors, be humble with superiors at work, that kind of thing. That'll probably just help a bit. But you're going to have really nice career energy, say for example, mid-month onwards for a while. You're going to have good, good work energy coming up. So it's, it's looking quite nice. There's a full moon happening on the 13th or 14th of July. This is in Uttara Shadha Nakshatra Sagittarius happening in your third house. So any beliefs that prevent your full confidence, you know, any beliefs that prevent you from being you, they might become clear at this time. And if they become clear and you become aware of them, you release them and you can go beyond it. So it's, it's nice. It's a good full moon for you, Libra. And then there's going to be a new moon, 29 July, push your nakshatra cancer. That's happening for you in your 10th house. So this is a great time to wish for next steps in your career. Uh, you know, or that your life purpose be shown to you. Maybe you're ready for that. You know, maybe you're ready for more responsibility or to really take on the next steps in career. So... Libra, I'm liking the look of this month for you, especially your Sun and Mercury. That's lovely energy there, you know, Sun being in the 10th house, mid-month onwards, that's looking very good. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Scorpio, you're one of the lucky three. You've got Mars in your sixth house all month. Wonderful. This is excellent energy for you to win. Okay, you can win business, you can win clients, you can win cases, disputes. But if you need to win something, this is good energy. I will say though, do take care towards the end of the month in early August. Okay, so this is Yes, this is good Mars energy, but it's also building up to something that could be very changeable or erratic. So be careful, uh, is what I am saying there. Now, Venus at the start of the month to about the 13th, 14th July is in your seventh house. 
This is not ideal energy for your love life, okay? So take extra care in your relationship. And if you put the needs of the other above your own, that will help, okay? But, um, you know, it's a good time for you to be a bit more empathetic if you can. Uh, Now, Venus, 14 July to the end of the month, is in Gemini 8th house. So that's, that's better energy for your marriage or your partnership, okay, with the one that you love. So that's good. So that's kind of mid-month onwards, you're going to have much better energy with, your, with the one that you love. So that's great. That's a good thing. And you can have that for a little while. That's, that's good. Now, 16, 17 July, we have both the sun and Mercury shifting from your eighth house to your ninth house. Okay, so this might cause you to be a bit run down. Uh, you might be tired, okay? Sun might drain your energy here. Okay, so this is not one of the better spots for physical health. It's a shame because you've got that stunning Mars energy, and that Mars energy should give you good health energy too. But equally, sun is not well placed there, so what, take care, okay? Like if you're feeling tired, just rest. Now there's a full moon happening 13th, 14th July, Uttara Shadha Nakshatra Sagittarius, that's happening in your second house. So beliefs that come from your family, family related beliefs or how you perceive yourself as part of the family or there's something around your beliefs and your family. These beliefs, something will come clear to you, okay? Uh, And you might discover how you've been being held back, okay? So something that's been holding you back in terms of your beliefs, and I am seeing that that could be to do with family. So something will become clear to you on this full moon, uh, and you'll be more free, more free to be yourself, okay, and not be held back by these beliefs or ideas, right? So that's a good thing. And there's a new moon happening, 29th July, Pushya Nakshatra Cancer, it's happening in your ninth house. So this is a great time to wish for more personal authority over your own life, okay? So great time to wish for your inner authority to expand that's always a good thing to wish for that you know you take your power back from where it's been invested before in the past especially taking your power back in terms of um, caring about what other people think of you right you don't want to do that you want to just get on and be you, right? And create and not be held back by these things. So that's a good thing to wish for on the 29th of July, to wish for more kind of personal authority over your own life, you know, to wish for more confidence, to wish for that, you, you know, you don't care so much what other people think. If you want to do it, if you believe in it, you go for it. It's that kind of, it's that kind of firepower that you're wishing for there, Scorpio. But all up, it's it's looking like a pretty good month for you. In fact, for you, it's it's a terrific month with that beautiful Mars energy in your sixth house. So I'm excited for you, Scorpio. All right. So now we are gonna welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now you've got Mars in your fifth house all month. This is quite good energy for your personal creative projects, okay? If there's something that you wanna get done creatively, if there's something you're making or you want to you know, get it out there, this is, this is good energy for that. It's good energy to get stuff done. Now Venus at the start of the month to about 13th, 14th July is going to be in your sixth house. This is not ideal energy for time with your partner, uh, the person you're in love with, or you know, if you want to pursue someone, this is not great energy here. So 
just take care. If you are in an established relationship, just take extra care. Uh, you know, be more empathetic, put the needs of the other more ahead of your own type thing that would help. Now Venus from the 14th of July to the end of the month is in Gemini 7th house. Yeah, again, this is not ideal for relationships. Wow. Yeah, you're not on a good stretch here for relationships and, and you won't be for a little while. Uh, don't worry, July and kind of part of August, not ideal for love, but things will improve, okay? So don't worry, Sagittarius, there's better energy coming for love life. Now, 16, 17 July, we have both the Sun and Mercury shift from your 7th house to your 8th house. So again, this is another energy that's kind of having an impact on your relationship scene. This Sun and Mercury, you know, being there in the seventh, that, that could make you quite self-centered in relationships. So again, take extra care in your relationships, definitely at this time. Sun and Mercury could also be draining. Okay, so if you're feeling tired, if you feel like you need to rest, then definitely just rest. Now there's a full moon happening on the 13th or 14th of July. That's in Uttara Shadha Nakshatra Sagittarius happening in your first house. So this is your full moon. Okay, so many things might become clear to you about your beliefs. And I'm going to say that a lot of things are going to become clear to you around your beliefs to do with yourself and how you are in relationship with other people. Okay, there's going to be lots of things that will come clear to you and that will make sense. You'll get some aha moments. There's a new moon happening 29th July, Pushya Nakshatra, Cancer. That's happening for you in your 8th house. So you might gain some new healing insights. It's a really great time to wish for new things for yourself and for your family as well. Okay, so and especially healing for your family that's a really great thing to wish for that your family lines ancestral lines and all that get a, get a good healing that would be a lovely thing to wish for uh, at this time all right well Sagittarius thank you so much for tuning in So now we are going to welcome Capricorn. This is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Capricorn, you have got Mars in your fourth house all month. So you might find this to be physically draining. Uh, equally, you know, it might be draining, it might be tiring, but it also might make you feel restless. Might make you feel like you just want to get out of the house, that you're sick of being in the house or something like that. Uh, it, so it's a bit of a funny energy there because on the one hand it might give you cabin fever but on the other hand it might also mean that you need to be at home kind of thing. Uh, I would say be careful in how you speak with your mother at this time or seniors at work, okay, so just take care in how you speak to people. Now Venus, at the start of the month to about the 13th, 14th July is in your fifth house. So that's great for romance, it's great for singles, okay, so if you are single, if you are, you know, looking to, to be with someone, there's some nice energy here for the first half of the month. But then we've got a bit of a shift. We've got a bit of a contrast here. So from 14 July to the end of the month, Venus is going to be in Gemini sixth house. That's really not ideal for re romance or relationships. What I would say is that, you know, and if you do meet someone or, you know, um, something really nice happens in your love life the first half of the month, that's great. But just bear in mind that the second half of the month is not so good for love and it won't be for about maybe even a month and a half. It'll be a little while before it gets better. So just bear that in mind. Now 16, 17 July we have both the Sun and Mercury shift from your sixth house to your seventh house. 
So the first half of the month you have excellent energy to excel at work or to do well in maybe if you're in a legal situation or you're competing or something like that. So there's some good energy there. But after after that, yeah, after 16, 17 July, the energy kind of tapers off um, and you might find that the energy could be draining or yeah, it might not be so good physically. It might also make you a bit self-centered as well. So that's just something to bear in mind to consider the needs of the other in, in relationships. Uh, there's a full moon happening 13th, 14th July in Uttara, Shadha, Nakshatra, Sagittarius. That's happening in your 12th house. So this is a really great full moon where lots of hidden spiritual dynamics that underpin your life may become clear to you. Okay, So it's a lovely full moon there. There's a new moon happening 29th July, Pushya Nakshatra Cancer in your seventh house. So this is a great time to wish for improvements or healing energy to come and fill your relationship, especially if you're married, okay? Um, you know, maybe you, you would like a healing to happen in some area in your love life. Yeah, this is good energy for that. Also, if you're single, this is a great time to wish for that special someone to, to come along, you know. So that's the 29th July, push your cancer nakshatra. Now Capricorn, I think this should be an okay month for you. There are better energies coming, so just hang in there. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now you are one of the lucky signs, Aquarius, so I'm happy for you here. You've got some good energy here. You've got Mars in your third house all month. This is a great time to go for new opportunities. Your social media might really expand this month. You know, if you need to go for a job, this is a great time to do that. Uh, some good energy in the sky for you. I would say just take care towards the end of the month and of course early August. Things could be quite changeable, quite erratic. But for you, thankfully, this Mars energy is, is really quite nice here. Now Venus, at the start of the month to about the 13th, 14th July, is in your fourth house. Okay, so this is great to spend time at home if you can. Okay, if you are going to spend time at home, this is a great time to be with the family, Indulge in some delicious cooking, some delicious food, you know, creature comforts, all of that. Uh, 14 July to the end of the month, Venus is going to be in Gemini in your fifth house. That's beautiful energy for singles, okay? So if you're single, you know, you might just be experiencing the romance of the everyday, you know, it's just nice energy there. So that's good. Now, the 16th, 17th July, we have both the Sun and Mercury shift from your fifth house to your sixth house. Okay, so for the first half of the month, you might notice that expenses are a bit higher. We've also still got Pap Kathri going on. That's, you know, possibly making it tough on your finances. Uh, but the second half of the month is excellent for work, okay? Good for work, competition, service getting new clients, getting in more money, all that kind of thing. So things are on the up Aquarius. Now there's a full moon happening 13, 14 July, Uttara Shadha Nakshatra Sagittarius. This is happening in your 11th house. This is a great full moon where you will be able to see what beliefs have helped you succeed in the past. Okay, so this is a really great time for you to reflect on your strengths. What do you do well? And what do, what do you need to keep doing? And what would you like to strengthen? What strengths of yours would you like to strengthen even more? That would be a good thing to contemplate on this full moon. And there's a new moon happening 29 July. Push your nakshatra, Cancer, in your sixth house. This is a great time to wish for next steps in your career to be made very obvious to you. Okay, if you would like, you know, the the way to be lit up and you want to see, all right, well, what, where is all this leading to? What am I doing here? 
you know you want to see the next steps wish for those next steps to be shown to you Aquarius all right well thank you so much for joining Aquarius you got that beautiful Mars energy there enjoy that Aquarius all right so we are now going to welcome Pisces this is Pisces ascendant Pisces moon Pisces sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology now Pisces you've got Mars in your second house all month so what I would say here is be extra careful in all your relationships especially your family relationships there can be arguments with this placement so take care across July especially towards the end of the month and early August now Venus at the start of the month to about the 13th 14th July is in your third house this is beautiful energy for socializing so that's really lovely uh, and then you've even got some nicer energy here you've got 14th July to the end of the month you're gonna have Venus move into Gemini in your fourth house this is great to spend time at home enjoy comfort you know at home good times at home cooking delicious foods all that kind of thing on 16th 17th July we have both the Sun and Mercury shift from your fourth house to your fifth house okay so the first half of the month you might discover yeah there could be challenges at home um, and that's kind of being reinforced there with the Mars energy too yeah there's some challenges at home here um, you've got Venus which is nice I know I just said that you can have a really nice time at home with Venus but you do have some challenging energy here as well with the Sun so just it's a bit of a mixed bag at home the, the nice energy but equally there's challenging energy too could be challenges in relation to your mum as well okay um, challenges in relation to mum but the second half of the month there is a shift you know have Sun and Mercury move to being in the fifth house this shift could indicate challenges at work could indicate uh, higher expenses that kind of thing as well there's a full moon happening on the 13th 14th July Uttara Shadha Nakshatra Sagittarius in your 10th house this is a great time to reflect on all the beliefs you hold that have helped get you where you are today okay really great time for you to spend some time acknowledging how far you've come this is that kind of energy and it'll be good for you to reflect on all the beliefs that have got you to the place where you are okay because you are somewhere very good know that you're at a place that one time perhaps you wished for maybe five or ten years ago you know so acknowledge and honor that now there's a new moon happening 29th July Pushya Nakshatra Cancer this is happening in your fifth house this is a great time to wish for excellent new creative ideas okay so if there's some new creativity or something you want to do or, or invent or come up with this is really good energy for that to get some ideas to get some insights really creative insights come through to you now the other thing is that you might be more fertile at this time as well so if you're planning for a baby that's great and of course if you're not planning for a baby that's something to bear in mind that you might be quite a bit more fertile at this time but other than that Pisces it's it's looking like a bit of a mixed bag for you I will say uh, you know I think you do have some lovely Venusian energy so tune into that if you are you know wanting this month to be to be something special you know Venus wherever she goes she always makes things that little bit special doesn't she so tap into your Venus energy because that's looking like the best energy you've got here I want to thank you so much for stopping by and please do like this video please do subscribe guys it really makes a difference thank you to those of you who have watched I realize that perhaps the the views might go down when you know I'm not presenting but I am on the mend I'm getting better and I should be back next month so I want to thank everyone for tuning in 
and I look forward to seeing you next time.